So I just wanted to make a little like quick video about my my steps for setting up a Raspberry Pi at the beginning of a project. So right when you take it out of the box, these are the things that I do to get the Raspberry Pi going and, and to start to program it for my project. Uh, I use Raspberry Pi for the basis of a lot of the electronics and robotics projects that I do. Uh, so I've got this workflow that I, that I think works really well. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use our desktop computer and we're going to uh, write an OS to the Raspberry Pi. And then we're going to do a few things that, uh, that set it up. So the second you plug the Raspberry Pi in for the first time, it's going to automatically connect to your home Wi-Fi. And it's also going to establish a connection. So then on your, on your desktop computer, you can connect to the Raspberry Pi and you can then begin to send code. You can update it and you can program it and do everything you need to do to get the Raspberry Pi ready for your project. And it's also a really nice way if you're, if you're trying to, to kind of dink around with Raspberry Pi for the first time. Um, it's a nice way of doing it without, without having to do a lot of the, you know, setting, put, connecting a mouse and connecting a, you know, a screen and stuff like that. Uh, so it's, it's a really good way to do it, um, but you're going to need a couple things before we get started. So you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is only compatible with the, with the newer Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi 4, Raspberry Pi 3, uh, the Raspberry Pi 0 W. Um, basically any of them that have uh, built-in Wi-Fi, because this is going to use the, the internal Wi-Fi on the chip. Um, and you're going to need that. You're going to need a way of powering the Raspberry Pi. So whether you use a battery or a, like a cell phone charging brick, Whatever you need to do, um, just just something that will that will make the the Raspberry Pi turn on. Uh, you're going to need an SD card reader, like a USB SD card reader. Uh, you're going to need a micro SD card um, to go with it, and you're going to need um, a couple pieces of software. So I put them in the the links on the the YouTube description. Um, one is an image writer, and that that'll basically write the uh, the OS onto the SD card, and the other are two files that I that I prepared. Uh, one of them will set up Wi-Fi, um, you know, ahead of time. So when you when you plug it in, it'll it'll connect to your network. And then the other one um, enables the the connection and allows us to uh, to program it, you know, over the network from our from our desktop. Um, so it's a good point to pause right now. Uh, go download that. Go gather all those files. Um, and then when you come back, we can uh, we can start the process. Okay, so now that you've got everything together that you need for this, uh, go ahead and take that micro SD card, plug it into your card reader, and then plug that into your computer. Next, open up the, the Raspberry um, Imager uh, V1.5 is what I've got here. This is that piece of software that you downloaded from the Raspberry Pi site. This is what lets you put the operating system onto the SD card. Um, so looking here, you'll have uh, a button that says uh, operating system, SD card, and write. What this is, is the operating system that you want to put on the Raspberry Pi, the SD card that you want to use, and then the button that says, okay, you know, perform that, that operation. Um, so we're going to click the, the ras right underneath the Raspberry Pi operating system, and it's going to pull up a list. So what some of these are like purpose-built operating systems for like running games and like emulations. Here's a media player, you know, all sorts of various OSs. But the main general purpose OS is uh, is a port of Debian. It's a, it's a Linux port, um, and it's the Raspberry Pi OS. If you click Raspberry Pi OS Other here, it'll pull up with two of them. A full one, which has the full desktop environment, the full GUI, and a lot of uh, built-in packages. And then you have a stripped-down one called uh, the Pi OS Lite. It's basically just enough for it to... Uh, to turn on and, and be able to work. Um, the idea here is, is that you can uh, save resources and only add the packages um, that you need because essentially when you install it, you can install whatever you want. So if you do the stripped down version, uh, you can really cater it to the projects you're working on. So for that purpose, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna click the Raspberry OS Lite. So we'll click that and then when it says SD cards here, you'll see my eight gigabyte um, pop up is H. So I'm gonna select that. And then all you have to do now is click right. So this is actually gonna take a while. So this is another good point to pause. I'm gonna click right and then when it's all done writing to your SD card, um, you can press play and then we'll continue. Okay, 
so you can see in this window here that it officially wrote the SD card so I just click um, continue and what you want to do is when it finishes this it it doesn't go back and read the SD card right away so just unplug the the flash drive and plug it back in so I'm gonna do that now so then what you should see here in this window here you've got all your hard drives registered um, I've got my H drive that's my my Raspberry Pi drive um, so if I click that I can access a good amount of the the Raspberry Pi's files um, but you don't have to worry about that um, just open the drive and then leave it in the, the root directory um, if you go over here to this uh, to this folder here this is where I've put the two files uh, that you downloaded these are the files that I created specifically for this tutorial um, I created um, one of them here is a copy it's not it's not the one I'm gonna actually use that's so I don't broadcast my uh, my Wi-Fi password and, and name all over the internet um, so it's just kinda got a fake password but um, open it in a in a text editor like like notepad or whatever is fine um, and you can see internally here it uh, it talks about the kind of the protocols that you use for Wi-Fi the only thing that we're really concerned with is the country code if you're you if you're in the US just keep US it doesn't matter um, you can actually look up the two-digit country codes um, just type in you know Raspberry Pi two-digit country codes in Google if you're if you're in another location and you want to put your country there that way it knows the the correct frequency to operate the Wi-Fi at um, and then you go through here and in quotations, this is your Wi-Fi name. So SSID here, right in the middle of these quotations, you want to delete what's here and then type in your Wi-Fi. So if my Wi-Fi was called Zach's house, I'll do that. And then it's case sensitive, so be sure to do exactly the the right spaces and uppercase, lowercase, all of that. It needs to be it needs to be right. Um, and then PSK over here is uh, is the password. So you go right in between these quotations. The quotations stay and you type in whatever your password is. So in this case, I'm saying my password is LinkedIn. Um, and then you do that, and then you just simply save your file. Right? So now, if you exit out of that, you can take that file that you created. Um, it's called WPA Supplicant. That's the one that has your Wi-Fi information in it. Just, uh, just copy it, and then paste it right into the root directory of your um, of your Raspberry Pi drive here. Now the second one, this is the file that the SSH is the file that tells it, okay, um, turn on that, that connection so that we can uh, we can program this thing remotely. So you don't have to do anything to that. You're just uh, you're just pasting that in there and all that does is give it directions that says it's okay to use this. They don't turn it on by default anymore. They used to. Um, but they, they thought it, uh, it was a security risk, so they want you to actually say, I really want this feature, and you do that by, by copying that file over. Um, so now all you have to do is uh, come over here and eject it. And now that it's ejected, you can take the SD card out and put it in your Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go do that now. Okay, so now that the Raspberry Pi is fully updated and it's on the network, uh, what you want to go here is this lower left hand corner and type in CMD and basically you're just going to bring up a command prompt. Um, this is just the window where I can send instructions to my desktop computer. So what we're going to use is a protocol called SSH. That's a way of um, devices uh, to connect to each other like different computers all on the same network. Um, this used to be kind of a standalone thing. You used to have external software to be able to, to establish SSH, but in about 2018, Microsoft finally included it uh, built into Windows. Um, so the command I'm going to send in is SSH, um, which is establishing the connection, and then I need to provide it with a username and a host name. So the default username on a Raspberry Pi is just Pi, P-I. And then you're going to say at, and then you're going to type in the host name. So this is the name associated with the particular device on the network. So if you were to look at your router, it would show up as Raspberry Pi. And that's the default for Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to type in that exactly. So we have SSH, established connection, the username Pi, at the host name, Raspberry Pi. And then I'm just going to press enter. 
Um, now it's going to ask for a password. And again, the default password for all Raspberry Pis at this stage is just Raspberry. So I'm going to type that. Um, this this system doesn't use any asterisks or anything, so it's not going to actually register any keystrokes. But just type it and then press Enter, and it'll work fine. So you're typing Raspberry. Press Enter. So there it is. Um, this green and blue area here is, uh, is, is, is a prompt telling you that you're now sending commands to the Raspberry Pi itself. So you, now you can establish um, what software you want to have on the Raspberry Pi and what packages and, and you, can, you can edit files here. Um, you basically have full control of the Pi. So right now we are essentially at what is the starting point for any Raspberry Pi project. Uh, the first thing, just to show you a, a sample command, I'm not going to do a bunch of them, but just, just the first one that I normally do is um, I type uh, sudo apt uh, update. So the images that you download for the, uh, for the OS are pretty up to date, but they're constantly pushing new updates, so they're not going to be fully updated because they have to go back and make a new image, right? And it wouldn't make sense to make a new image all the time. So what they do is they give you a pretty updated one, and then you can go do this code right away. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send it. And it basically checks the internet and says, am I updated? And if they're not, it downloads the file and installs, installs it for itself. So basically, I'm just making sure that I'm starting with a nice, fresh, up-to-date uh, Raspberry Pi OS. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's the basis then. This is you know pulling it out of the box and getting to the point where you can actually build your project. I think this is the easiest way to do it. Um, another way to do it would be to, to attach a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse and then uh, and just use it like a computer and then set it all up from there. Um, but that can be a pain. I, I don't like keeping extra mice and keyboard around. Um, so I, I, I like being able to use my desktop and connect to it easily. Um, the other cool thing about this too is that if I have it installed in a robot or something and I need to update something, all I have to do is turn the Pi on, establish a connection over the network, and then you know change whatever I want. So it gives you a lot of ability to kind of update things down the road uh, once you have this uh, system in place. So this is by far, every Raspberry Pi project, by far the best solution I've found um, to actually build out your Raspberry Pi and uh, customize it for your project. Um, so if you have any questions, if you have any trouble, uh, let me know, and I don't mind helping um, kind of figure it out. Um, all of these files are, are hosted and they're, they're placed in the, um, in the comments of the YouTube video. So download them, feel free to distribute them. Um, I kind of always keep a copy around, so every time I start a new Pi, I just drag them into place. Um, so, you know, that, that seems to work out pretty well. So, thanks for taking a look.